do positive labels help or hurt children? During episode 83, we talked about how negative labels hurt children. We heard Bailey's story of how she was labeled as too loud, too much, energetic, stupid, wild, and an outcast. All of those negative labels made her feel like a bag of crap, misunderstood, and not worthy of anything good. Maybe you're wondering, what about positive labels? We can still speak positive labels over our children, right? This is a great question because there is a good argument for how positive labels can help and hurt children. So keep tuning in to this episode. You'll want to know where you should land on this. You're listening to the Renewed Mama podcast. I'm Kimberly Mutar, and I help mamas like you stay renewed. As your host, my mission is simple. I help you renew your thoughts that are on repeat while you wash dishes or fold laundry. I help you renew the words you say to yourself and to your children when it's the best day ever and when it spirals into chaos, temper tantrums, and sibling fights. I am your coach helping you to renew how you respond so that you keep showing up as the mama you want to be. If you want to speak life to your children and give them a strong belief in who they are, because we all know that current culture is trying to assign them all of the wrong labels and confuse them in their identity, then you are in the right place. Keep folding laundry or baking cookies and stay renewed with me. Let's go. Did you know that the Renewed Mama podcast is on YouTube and Rumble? Do you sometimes feel like you'd like to talk to a friend while you wash dishes or chop veggies? If you'd like to laugh along with me as if we were sitting right across from each other, then I invite you to push play and watch the podcast on YouTube or Rumble. So what about positive labels? Are they helpful or harmful for your children? By positive labels, I think of good words that encourage and build children up like special important, teachable, eager to learn, uses their energy to do amazing work, stays faithful to the task. Your children love it when you acknowledge in them this kind of character growth and maturity. It is worth celebrating. Who doesn't want to hear nice things said about them? It means a lot to them if you acknowledge when they are diligent, kind, when they put others first, when they overcome a challenge or a loss. When you notice that they are brave, committed, or trustworthy, say so. Your children want to hear sincere appreciation, encouragement, and specific praise because it speaks to who they are and who they are growing to become. We can all agree on that, right? Anytime you can edify and speak life to your children, do it. Now, the question lies with when can positive labels hurt your child? Can positive labels limit a child. Maybe someone would argue that if a child is labeled the responsible one, they might feel as though they can't take risks or can't act goofy or can't take a break from watching over their younger siblings because they have to be the responsible one. Tell me in the comments if you can relate to the label of responsible. I encourage you to have an open conversation with your children who you are labeling as the responsible one. Say, I admire how responsible you are with keeping an eye on your siblings. It is such a blessing to me because I don't have to worry when they're in your care. But I want to make sure that you don't feel as though you must always watch over them. You're free to have fun, to be a little goofy, to hang out with your friends. Do you feel like the responsibility of watching over your siblings often falls on your shoulders? 
and then pause, smile, and just listen to what they have to say. Along those same lines, what if a child is labeled as the creative one? Does that mean she cannot also be scientific or athletic and explore those interests? Again, I encourage you to initiate a conversation with your child so that they feel free to say, I'd like to explore science. Would you help me do some science experiments? Or you ask them, what do you think about doing some science experiments with me? And invite them to try something new with you. If a child is labeled as sensitive, is that good or bad? Being sensitive could mean several things like feeling hurt often by others, or it could mean being keenly aware of the needs and the feelings of others and then reaching out to meet those needs. Could we be limiting our children even with positive labels? Why don't you tell me what you think in the comments? Let's talk about the good girl, bad girl, the good boy, bad boy labels. What if you always called your child good girl, but one day she cuts her little sister's hair? Not just a little snip with the scissors, but a whole big chunk. And in your surprise, you say, bad girl. Now, all of those times she did good and didn't cause trouble means little because now she's bad. And she will remember bad girl more than the positive because it creates a memory marker in her brain. Mommy's upset. I didn't do good. And now I'm a bad girl. Andrew and I decided to not use the good girl, bad girl, good boy, bad boy labels in our home. But even my children have told me that sometimes more than the positive encouragement they remember when I've shouted in frustration or annoyance, even in surprise, like, what are you doing? What were you thinking? And they took on the feeling of bad girl, bad boy, like you messed up. You didn't do good. They took those negative feelings on more than the positive times of encouragement. Ouch. That goes back to how negative labels hurt and how our negative critical shaming responses hurt. That's why it's so important that we renew our thoughts, our words, and our responses as parents. What positive labels are not is flattery. I said this earlier, but I'll say it again. Your children want to hear sincere appreciation, encouragement, and specific praise that speaks to who they are and who they can grow to become. So what does sincere appreciation and specific praise look like? You can say, that was a kind thing to do for your sister. You made her feel really special by playing a game with her. And then you can give them a Speak Life badge that says, I am kind. How about you say, thank you for going the extra mile to collect all the garbage and to take it out to the garage. That is super helpful. And then give them a Speak Life badge that says, I am thoughtful. Praise their effort regardless of the outcome. Here's another example of praising their effort rather than the outcome. I appreciate how diligent you stayed with learning to ride your bike. I know that with diligence like that, with a little bit more practice, you'll get it in no time. And you'll soon forget that it was even hard. You'll say, mom, it's so easy to ride a bike. And then give them a Speak Life badge that says, I am diligent. I encourage you to go back all the way to episode seven of the Renewed Mama podcast, where I share about the difference between praise and encouragement. Listen to that and then let me know in the comments how that helps you get clear on the words that you are saying to your children. Let's talk about the difference between identity and behavior when using positive labels with your children. Make a distinction between who they are, their character and their identity, and their behavior. Your child's behavior, a temper tantrum, a meltdown, a lie, a sibling fight, stealing from your wallet, those don't define who your child is, their choices that they make, their behavior, actions that they do. 
As a parent, you need to address this misbehavior so that they grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, but don't label them negatively for it. Separate their behavior from who your child is. Let me give you a few examples. Just because your child is choosing to be shy and not join the game or talk to a new friend doesn't mean that their identity is shy. Try saying, I see you like to observe others. What do you notice? And then just let them talk. Just listen, respond with, oh, ooh. Or say, I see you like to take your time to watch before you jump in and play. Does that game look fun? And then give them a Speak Life badge that says, I am courageous or I am brave. Maybe your child is whining a lot. Before you label them as whiny, which is a choice, not an identity, try saying, I see you're upset. How may I help you? What can we do together to solve this? And then give them a Speak Life badge that says, I am patient. Instead of negatively labeling your child as too much, too loud, too busy, try saying, your energy amazes me. I used to dance across the house like a gymnastics class and I used the couch as a trampoline and I swung my arms all over the place when I was a kid. You pay attention to what is going on around you and you know when is the best time to talk and when is the best time to sit and to listen and when is the best time to let all of that amazing energy out and then give them a Speak Life badge that says, I use my energy to do amazing things. Can you see the difference? Separate their behavior, which is a choice, even if a, as a young child, they don't cognitively recognize that they're making that choice. Separate that from who your child is or their identity. Remember that children are learning and they need your guidance. I know it sounds silly, but many times when my children were little, I would think, don't they know this already? I mean, isn't it obvious? How many times do I have to tell them? (laughs) I'm laughing because how crazy is that? I had to say it to myself. Kimberly, they are children. They need you to guide them in this. They need you to remind them in this. And then I would respond with more grace and patience once I reminded myself of that. Children don't know yet how to do it all right. And let's face it, even as adults, we don't get it right all the time. Also remember that there are many factors contributing to your child's behavior. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Are they thirsty? Are they needing your attention? Or are they overstimulated? Meeting these physical needs first can greatly reduce the outbursts and the temper tantrums. I encourage you to listen to episode 30, Strengthening You, Mama. What do you and your children need today? Go back and listen to that good one. All right. Positive labels do not manipulate. It's real, I feel it's important to say this. I said that positive labels are not flattery, And we don't use positive labels or positive words to manipulate or to condition our children or a student into an approved role or a behavior that makes us look good or gives us the least resistance. We don't use words to manipulate children into conforming. We speak life to help them grow and mature and flourish. And we speak words of life that are words that they need to hear. Not every child needs to hear the same words of praise and encouragement. But what speaks to them as a person? Also, sarcasm does not work with your children. Saying, I just love it how my children clean up after themselves does not motivate them to clean up. (laughs) Believe me, I've tried it. Sarcasm doesn't work. Remember that life and death are in the power of your tongue. You and I, we speak life. 
Sometimes we see things in the lives of our children or our students that we don't like or we don't want there. Rather than complain, argue, shame, or get frustrated, begin to declare the opposite of what you see over them. If you see laziness, declare diligence. If you see a low self-image, declare value and importance. If you see self-hatred, declare beauty and acceptance. If you see a struggle with schoolwork and I can't do this attitude, declare knowledge and understanding. If you see unmotivated or distracted, declare focus and an eagerness to learn. If there is strife in your home, declare peace. If you feel depression or discouragement, declare joy, laughter, and fun in your home. Your words have the power to call into being what does not yet exist. You may not see it yet in your child, but it can be. Even before it can be seen, God calls it as though it were already done. God speaks of non-existent things as if they already existed. So should you and so should I. What truth do you need to speak over your children, your students, your spouse, your family members, even your colleagues today? Believe the best about them even before you see it. I want to remind you that all 74 badge phrases inside the Speak Life Badges sticker award books share a positive I am phrase for you to speak praise and encouragement over your children and students. It is a label, a sticker badge that your child or student can wear on their shirt or put on their notebook or in their I am loved journal. Tell them who they are as a person and who they can grow to become when you give them a Speak Life badge. The suggested scripts will guide you in what to say. Do you want your words of encouragement and praise to have a lasting impact on your children? Then give them Speak Life Badges sticker awards. Here's what Erica had to say about Speak Life Badges. Today I challenged Clayton to take a baby step in bravery at the splash pad. I know these little word seeds of encouragement will grow and help him when he needs bravery in the future. At bedtime, I removed the sticker and placed it beside the mirror. Just glancing at it really encouraged my heart too. Words seem so small but are so powerful and can completely change the way we view ourselves. Shop Speak Life Badges today at speaklifebadges.com. Mama, you know that I am here for you. If you need any help speaking life to your children, maybe you've tried it all and you still can't motivate or connect with them or understand how to help them in an area where they are struggling, I can help. Do you need help breaking off the negative labels that were spoken over you as a child? You know that they are holding you back, but you can't change the negative critical tape that's replaying in your mind no matter how hard you try. If that's you, then go now to Renewed Mama Coaching. I can help you think, speak, and respond right for your child who is struggling. I can help you root out lies from negative labels and help you to replace them with a truth-filled identity. Go to Renewed Mama Coaching and book your first coaching session now. Thank you for listening to the Renewed Mama podcast. If you learned something today about positive labels, share this with another mama you know. Would you take one minute right now to leave a review for the show on Apple Podcasts? This helps more mamas find the show and be renewed too. Thank you. I appreciate you. I care about you. Your mama's success, your parenting success, the abundant life you have with your husband and your children means everything to me. I'm here for you. 
Austin the Hedgehog is bringing mailbox fun to your kids. Your children ages 3 to 13 can receive mailbox surprises like activity postcards, happy birthday cards, stickers, crafts, recipe cards, coloring pages, puzzles, special gifts like the I Am Loved journal, a tumbler, Austin's matching happy birthday toque, and so much more from Austin the Hedgehog. Straight to your mailbox with their own name on it each month. All teaching life lessons, such as helping, using time wisely, how to monitor their own screen time, how to choose the right friends. Being strong means more than just muscles. How to have self-control and their words are like seeds that will grow into fruit in their life. It is oh so good from Austin the Hedgehog. Two subscription levels are available. Register your children today at austinskidsclub.com.